Now on BBC Two, Scene investigates the unexplainable, the unbelievable, and the supernatural. I do believe in the supernatural, and uh, I think it's all to do with ghosts and spirits and YouTube boards and being able to see in the, into the future, things like that. I don't believe in ghosts and uh, things like that, but I believe that people do have certain powers, really, you know, telepathy, and people that can make objects move. I think I would rather not bother going to a medium, just live my life how it's going to happen. I would probably go and see a clairvoyant, just out of curiosity. Well, I, I do believe there are certain people that have powers, but not as many as they claim in uh, Britain. There can't be that many. So there's got to be fakes. Mention the paranormal, and everyone seems to have an opinion. But for some people, it's a religion. The past three generations of my family have been spiritualists, so I was brought up as a spiritualist. And for me, it's not just a religion, it's a way of life. And most of the ways I see life, because I interpret things differently, I base my morals and my principles on the fact that there's more to me than just what's around me. The main teaching of spiritualism is to prove that there's life after death and to demonstrate it as real by making communication between two worlds. Well, this evening we have Anne with us, who's going to act as the guinea pig. And Spiritualists believe that through psychic powers, they can speak to the dead or the spiritual world. People who claim to have these powers are called mediums. In a London suburb, a group of believers are taking part in a development circle where they hope to develop their clairvoyant abilities. Besides, obviously, getting clairvoyance or whatever messages that may be imparted to you from the spirit. So, will you all relax, please, and come with me through these exercises. Now, firstly, I'd like you to imagine that you are enveloped by a brilliant red that is surrounding you, that is penetrating you. Now that red changes hue. It becomes an orange. Now that orange turns gradually into a yellow. A development circles mainly to become aware more of, of what's around you and to start to tune into other levels and to ultimately develop as a medium whereby you can contact the other worlds finally turns into a blue. For years, scientists all over the world have been searching for evidence of the paranormal, from psychic predictions to metal benders. At the University of Edinburgh, a special research group has been set up to study some of these psychic phenomena. This investigation is known as parapsychology. People have a lot of unusual experiences that we can't explain. Parapsychology studies some of them. The kinds of experiences that it studies are ones in which it looks as though a person seems to be communicating with some part of the world around them in some new way that we don't presently understand. I was up and visiting my sister in Dundee with Dawn, my friend, and we were playing a game called Pictionary. And that's a game where you get a word and you've got to describe this word by drawing pictures. And my sister and I were in opposite teams and we kept on drawing the same pictures to describe the word. And it, were, it wasn't pictures, um, words like house, where the only thing you could possibly draw would be a house. It was things like names like Winston Churchill, where there was, you know, awkward drawings. And um, my sister put the pad down and she, she just happened to comment, look, we've drawn the same thing. And then we did it again and we kept on drawing the same thing. And I didn't think anything of it. I don't think that's got to do with the supernatural. But it's just one of these things between sisters. Um, about a week before our, my primary school went on fire, I dreamt I had a nightmare that it went on fire. But that could have been coincidence. I had a dream once that there was a bomb in the place that I worked. 
So I got up in the morning and I told my mum. Then I went into my work and there was a bomb scare the following morning, but I don't believe that's because I'm psychic or I, I can feel things. I just think it was coincidence that it happened that way. Listening to LBC. Coincidence or not, prophecy is a growth industry. For you, Christian. That's Christian Dion, of course, our LBC psychic. Uh, Sarah, very good afternoon to you. Hello. Hi, Sarah. On Britain's biggest commercial radio station, the most popular phone-in program is with psychic consultant Christian Dion. He uses tarot cards to make psychic predictions. Yeah. Bloody terrible. Never mind. What it actually does show, if we first of all look backwards with you, Sarah, just for the moment, and go back to around the April period of time of this year, yeah. that from then to now has been somewhat, as we'd like to say, wobbly around you. Yeah. Oh, now... Oh, right next to you, in fr ahead, between now and Christmas... I was born into a family that all understood the gift, which I feel now is very fortunate. And I just was brought up with it. It wasn't until I went to school and realised that everybody didn't have this ability that, that I found it was sort of odd. Which is sort of in the balance for you, so to speak. Yeah. And the second one is romantic and emotional matters. Right. Now, is it that you found that June itself, that of this year, was particularly uptight or tense? Because mm, it's like, ah, yeah. and it, it's still not passed by, if you understand. No. And I feel that until we've got past the October... I remember once one of my aunties coming to visit, and uh, I said to her, oh, I like your new red car. I was about five, six at the time, and she said, I haven't got one. I didn't even come in a car. I says, oh, yes, you have, it's outside. And about two weeks later, it was a birthday, and her husband owned a garage, and he bought her a red car for a birthday, which she knew nothing about. And she turned up, and then she went, oh. She suddenly realised what had been said a couple of weeks before. But it was very much like that at the beginning. Just odd things would come out, you know. And at that age, you're not aware that it's something that you have to develop. It's something that just does develop. Now and next April, there's a property move for you as well. Really? Is that definite? Yeah. Absolutely definite. And don't worry over it. It's a good one. Yeah. OK? OK. My pleasure. But stick with that career thing and don't be put off it. OK, then. All right, darling. All right. Bye-bye. But are there things that we do or say which can give strong hints about ourselves to the psychics? And would that mean all their information does not come from psychic ability? If you're consulting someone like a psychic reader and so on, there are many ways that you can tell them or show them what you're interested in, what your problems are and so on. The way you dress, what you're wearing, the way you move your body, the tone of voice, your accent, where you come from, all of these things can tell them information. Also, people tend to consult psychics when something's gone wrong or when something's about to change or they need advice. And so oftentimes, a clever fake can just simply run through three or four or five different ordinary possibilities and wait until they get some action, wait until the person starts to respond. Then they can follow up on it. And we'll always remember the statements that were correct and we'll forget about all the ones that weren't correct or that were just a wee bit off to the side. Uh, we now go to Vipin of Bromley, is that right? Vipin? As the calls come in, Christian deals the cards. He is not told anything about the caller, just the name and the location. He claims as the caller speaks, he gets messages through the cards about their present and future concerns. You brought two major categories out, Vipin. One is career, mm -hmm. that's the first and foremost on your mind, right. linked into property, mm -hmm. and secondly is emotional. Right. Now I want to come to the first one first. Mm -hmm. Is it you personally that's connected to the media world as in regards to career or someone close to you? There's no one, no. No, and you're not aware of anybody wanting to go into the creative side of the media world? No. All right, fine. Leave that with you and look closely... But does he ever get readings wrong? We actually don't get readings wrong. What's, what's very odd that does sometimes go skiwiff is time. Time can sometimes throw things out, but the events happen. Over the past ten years, the fascination with psychic phenomena has grown, while belief in traditional religions has slumped. Today, psychic readers can command between 10 and 60 pounds for a 40-minute personal reading. Yet there is usually a four to five week waiting list. It seems we can't wait to find out about our fate. So if anybody talks about starting a partnership, you turn it straight down mm -hmm. in any format business-wise. Right. And was it in August or September that you started the organization of property? That's right. August or September? Uh, August. Uh, because it's almost complete. 
Well, <laughs> I can't sell it off, right? That's a problem. Sorry? I can't sell my property off. No, I said it's almost complete. Ah, right. What you started in August or September right. is almost complete. If you add six weeks on mm -hmm. to the end of uh, August, takes us roughly into uh, my arithmetic works out the middle of October, mm -hmm. it'll be sold by then. There's been one offer that slipped away, mm -hmm. but there's another one about to come. Lovely. Definitely. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank Bye -bye. you, Vivian. All the very best to you. And uh, just a reminder that Christian and I will be back here after the news and sports headlines. This is The Pete Murray Show. But while psychics claim to provide useful and entertaining services, is it possible to scientifically test their abilities? Oh, they try, oh, yeah. They stick you in Faraday cages, the way you will TCG machines and all this. But, so, but, but when it can't print out on their piece of paper, black or white, they don't want to know. All right, Caroline, could I have your hand up? But at the Is University of Edinburgh, thing? tests are being conducted to find out more about the unexplainable. We study two different kinds of things. One is the notion of ESP, or extrasensory perception, where it looks as though somebody is receiving information of some sort or knowing about some event or something that's going on out in the environment somewhere that they ordinarily shouldn't have any knowledge of. Maybe because it's some distance away, because it uh, is in the future, or because there is some sort of uh, something to block their senses in between, like the wall of a room or so on. And now just a bit of tape to hold it all in place. This experiment is hoping to measure ESP, extrasensory perception. The subject, Caroline, is placed in a room with red lights. She is deprived of two vital senses, okay, sight and sound. Tell me, do you have any cracks? Or is that no, that's eliminated? Fine. That's fine. You can't see any cracks or anything no. else. Okay, well, what I'm going to do now is put the headphones on, and then I'll start the white noise tape. Mm -hmm. And when you hear that, just start speaking. Remember just to say everything and anything that occurs to you. Any imagery, any feelings, any thoughts, whatever occurs, Whatever experiences you have, say them out loud. Okay? Okay. Do you have any questions? No. Okay, here come the headphones. Is that comfortable? Mm-hmm, yeah. That's okay? Mm hmm Okay, we have the microphone in place, and I'm starting the white noise now. And enjoy your session, yeah. and get lots of accurate impressions about the target. Then she's asked to try to imagine a picture which is being sent by another person from a distant room in the same building. It's hoped there could be some signs of telepathy. Yeah, I'm seeing wavy lines. Mountains. Thinking of seahorses. Scientists also carry out tests for PK or psychokinesis. People known as metal benders claim to have the power to move or bend metal with their minds. It all started over 16 years ago with Yuri Geller. He claimed that through psychic powers he could bend metal simply by stroking it. Whenever he appears, people all over the country claim that spoons and forks bend at their will. Begin to stroke it gently and wish it to bend. No laughing, no laughing. No. This is serious. Well, uh, Terry, come close. You see, it's concentrate. beginning. Yes. The so let's see the key. I can, I can see. Key's beginning to bend. <laughs> you people at home wish it to bend, wish the watches to start working. Look, I'm, I'm going to... You see, it's curling upwards very, very slowly. I chose a key because it's more personal. Yes, it is. Look, I'll show it to the camera. There you are. I don't know whose key this is, but it's, it's bent. And it will continue bending. If Many professional bend magicians slowly. were outraged by Yuri Geller's claims. In fact, some magicians say it's all trickery.
Richard Wiseman is a member of the Inner Magic Circle. I think there could well be a link, or I think there is a link, between magic and some people who claim to be psychic. You can never say there's a link between everybody who's psychic. You, know, you, you have to take each case on its own merit. Um, but certainly it is true that a lot of psychics are using simply a magician's methods in a new guise. Um, and the ethics behind that can be a little bit suspect uh, if they're actually taking money from people or ad advising them in a, a kind of counselling way, but using trickery underneath that, then I think there could be something very dangerous there. OK, this is a uh, demonstration to show you how you can use trickery or sleight of hand in order to appear psychic. You see, this morning I made a prediction. And to find out whether it's true or not, I'm going to simply ask you to choose a card in the fairest possible manner. I'm just going to count the cards from the envelope, sorry, from the deck, onto the envelope, and finally onto the mat. What I would like you to do, any time you like, is just say the word, stop. As long as it's sometime today. Stop. OK, you have a choice of three cards. The one on the deck, the one on the envelope, or the one I just placed on the mat. Which would you like? On the mat. Okay, you're going to make it tricky, right? There we go. If you would like to hold on to both my prediction and your cards so that I can't get at them, you see, you could have chosen any one of these cards. In fact, you decided to stop on that one. If you'd like to turn it over for me and show everyone the card you've chosen, Ace of the Ace of Hearts. And you see, if you'd have had the next card, you'd have got the Five of Clubs, the um, King of Spades, the Seven of Hearts, and so on. You chose the Ace of Hearts. That's not particularly surprising. What's more amazing is when I remove my prediction, it happens to match your card in both suit and value. <laughs> Another fun thing to try is ESP, or mind reading. And the problem here is if I ask you to think of a card, people always say, well, people always think of the same cards. And to a certain extent, that's true. So to make sure the selection is absolutely fair, I'm going to ask you to take the cards, cut them as many times as you like behind your back, and just take the top card for me. So if you'd like to hold on to the cards, thank you. Place it behind your back so that I can't see it. Cut the cards as many times as you like. And then just remove that top card for me and tell me when you've done that. OK, okay I'll have the deck back. You hold on to the card. That's great. I'd like to have a look at that card for me. OK, and just concentrate on it. Through his see, show, The Art of Deception, Richard demonstrates how trickery can be used. But does he believe anyone has psychic ability? I don't think I do believe anybody has those powers, but that's a belief. I'm happy for someone to come and demonstrate to me that I'm wrong. It could be an eight, a nine, or a ten. I'm going to go for the middle one. Are you thinking of the nine of hearts? Ah, oh, everyone a miracle. Scientists themselves can be fooled, especially by a clever magician. Sometimes such a person will promise to show an extremely powerful ability, and then they'll try a trick in the lab which gets around all the very carefully laid plans of the scientist. For instance, one time I watched something done on videotape where someone was claiming to be able to stroke metal like a nail and have it bend just by psychic means alone. Well, the scientists were trying to be very, very careful, and so they had cameras coming in from all different angles so that the person really couldn't sneak a little bend in when no one was looking. And so what happened was that the person said, well, I'll stroke it, and I'll stroke it, and I'll stroke it, and nothing happened. And they started to say, well, that's too bad. It looks as though I failed. And the scientist said, oh, that really is a shame. So the psychic said, oh, so we're done with this now. I'll just set it back in the box. And so when he took it to set it back in the box, all the scientists sort of relaxed their attention. And as he set it back in the box, he gave it a good bend and set it back in the box. A little bit later, one of the scientists said, oh, wait, wait a minute. It looks as though there was some bending after all. It just seems to have taken place after you set it back. So the scientists were completely fooled, and it wasn't until later on, looking at everything on the camera, that we saw what had actually happened. In America, top scientists studied two young men, Edwards and Shaw, who claimed to have psychic ability. The scientists had been convinced through their own laboratory tests. Then recently, in a press conference in New York, an unusual announcement was made which became major news. 
The man who called in the press was a famous professional magician, James Randi. I'm going to ask these two gentlemen a very simple, direct question. Can you tell us how do you do it? Although, uh, to be quite honest, we cheat. Edwards and Shaw were not metal benders after all. They were magicians. But for four years, they had convinced scientists they had genuine psychic abilities. But regardless of the claims of trickery and scientific evidence, some people remain fascinated by the paranormal. Today, magazines are full of ads crying out to forecast your future and fortune. And there are development groups for those who want to train as clairvoyants. Let's now relax and concentrate our thoughts on Anne by the side of me. And later on, we'll see what we can find out about her. Clairvoyance means clear seeing, and it's being more aware of the problems around the person and helping them and giving solutions. A medium is really a bridge between two worlds. To start off with you, tune into yourself and become more aware of things outside this world. Then there's some exercises with your mind to become aware of parts of your brain that you don't normally use. Then it leads on to giving messages and passing information to other people. Christine? Well, I feel with Anne that um, there's been conflicting emotions mm. and there's been decisions to make, but you've not been quite sure which way to go. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I feel there's a lady in spirit around you, very much of a grandmother type of person. Um, I feel she suffered before she went over, but towards the end, I feel she went quite quickly. Yes. Um, there's an no idea that when too. people are dead, that's and the end, or if there is an afterlife, it should be kept very different from this world. But I see life after death as a continuous process. You have um, had a health problem um, both a little while back. I think it's important to make the supernatural more acceptable and to show so people that there's more to life than what's obviously in front of you. Linger on a little bit and that you're not to over worry, it would only make the position worse. Mm. Right, okay. Now, Ken, how did you uh, feel about Anne? What were right. your views? Well, to be perfectly honest, I didn't get a lot for Anne. Um, I did get something for this gentleman over here. So, yes, we'll is that on. permissible? Yeah. Um, I get the name Andy with you, linked. I don't know if it's... At school, I tended not to tell anyone. Name, I thought that they would see it in the wrong way. And um, I'd feel embarrassed by telling them that. But a few people, a few close friends, I did tell, and they accepted that. And nowadays, I'm quite open about what I believe in and hope that if people realise what I believe in, I better help them or give them advice. She's very much with you in that element. Yeah. I think that psychic powers are something natural which should be developed. So in terms of that, I want to develop my own potentials as much as I can. Yeah, I've been told something's going to happen in springtime. Mm. I also get the name Margaret, I feel, is in spirit as well. I'm not sure if it's this lady, but I get the name linked. I Maybe think you have to be open-minded. I can't say I to you anything that will convince you that it's true. It has to nice come through personal experience in the end. A clairvoyance can comfort you, but so can anyone else who's got a big heart and is willing to listen to you. But they just take money for it, and friends would do it for nothing. I think when someone's died and if you're upset enough to go to a spiritualist, then you're going to cling on to anything anyone tells you. There's no reason why I should believe in it. But, I mean, it makes the world seem less cold and unfeeling. It kind of makes it more interesting.
may like to know that most BBC school programmes have a wide range of support material to accompany them. They include books, notes for teachers and information packs. Schools can obtain an additional order form for the current term by ringing this number, which is open 24 hours a day. And if you're a parent interested in buying any of this material, then information is obtainable from the same number. 01 991 Next year on to our seesaw programme, Penny's House.